Hi, hello, namaskara. Myself, Mahesh Prasad, as you know. So, right now we are in a chapter that is the motion in a plane, right? So, first we have discussed about a vector and different types of vector. Then, what else we have discussed? In the previous class, we have discussed about the resolution of the vector as well as we have started up with the topic that is the dot product. In a sense, uh, the product, the dot product of two vectors, which is nothing but a scalar. Similarly, so today we will discuss one of the most beautiful concept that is the uh, uh, cross product, which means cross. What when I say cross, what comes to your mind? Somewhat like this, right? This is a indication of cross, right? So similarly. Uh, we are uh, supposed to take two vectors, then we are supposed to do the cross product of these two vectors. Okay? So, according to the definition of a cross product, what it says that the cross product of the two vectors which gives the product of magnitude of the two vectors and a small angle, it is in the sine of a small angle between these two vectors, which is nothing but the sine angle. Why is the sine angle which comes into the picture? We will get to know now. So, according to the definition, if you want to write some equation, how it looks? This is the vector A, and this, this is a vector B. So, this is nothing but the indication of cross over here. The cross product of two vectors is equal to the product of magnitude, the product of magnitude of two vectors into sine of the angle between these two magnitude, that is this. So, this is a formula we can find under the concept of cross product. Okay? Now, if I want to uh, give explanation about this particular cross product, we suppose to take one now. Right hand thumb rule. What do you mean by right hand thumb rule? See, for example, imagine there is a conductor over here. Conductor in the sense for a wire. Okay. So if I hold in such a way that if I hold somewhat like this, this is a this is a curl. You have to curl in such a way that the other finger which encircling the conductor gives. This is a direction of a vector A to B. And this thumb which indicates direction of a cross product of two vectors in the sense. Uh, imagine this is a plane somewhat like this. Like this. Imagine this is a plane somewhat like this. And there is a point over here. This is a vector A and this is a vector B. Okay. Now what happens here is that Imagine this is the vector A and this is the vector B and if I hold in such a way that what happens? The direction of a direction of vector A it looks somewhat like this and makes an angle theta over here. Makes an angle theta over here. So this is how exactly I suppose to hold this other finger which is encircling the conductor gives direction of a vector A to B, correct one? This is a vector A and this is a vector B and this gives a direction of vector A to B. And this thumb which indicates the cross product of the cross product of this vector which means that is a C vector or which is equal to A cross B vector. Correct? So, so where C vector gives a direction of cross product of two vectors. So, this is the basic formula of our right hand the right hand thumb rule the thumb rule this is a just to remember nobody is going to ask for this right hand thumb rule for easier understanding we can utilize the right hand thumb rule okay so right hand thumb rule how to indicate the other finger which encircling the conductor gives what direction of vector a to b and the thumb gives direction of what the cross product of two vectors so this is the beauty of this particular right hand thumb rule similarly uh, if I go with the, some special cases, which are the special cases we can have. So, when are two vectors, when two vectors are parallel or anti parallel to each other, when two vectors are, for example, if I have two vectors somewhat like this, so this is the vector A and this is the vector, this is the vector B, 
Uh, now, see, this is a head and this is a tail. If a head is coincided with somewhat like this, don't you think these two vectors are parallel to each other? What is the angle we can have from here to here? The obvious side is zero. If, if it is somewhat like this, then angle is from here to here. Use what? 180 degree. You see, if the angle is, the angle is zero or 180 degree, 180 degree. According to our relation, that is A cross B, which is equal to AB sin theta. So what I can have over here, so what I can have, that is A cross B, which is equal to AB sin theta. So what is the AB sin theta? Theta value is 0, sin 0 is how much? Sin 0 is, obviously it is 0. Sin 180 is also 0, 0 and anything what? 0, right? So this is equal to 0. So this is how exactly we can find. Which means, which means what I can have over here, the cross product of, the cross product of i into i gives what? Zero. So this is how exactly we can find. So if I be in terms of the same cross product, in terms of a unit vector, if I say i cross i which is equal to zero, similarly j cross j which is equal to K cross K K cross K which is equal to 0 which is equal to 0 so this is how we are supposed to remember so whenever we have a cross product of a 2 vector cross product of a 2 unit vector in terms of unit vector I can take it as 0 now think about this when our two when we have two vectors somewhat like this, this is a vector A and this is a vector B. What what is the angle between these two vectors I can have over here? The angle is the angle is how much? 90 degree. What about the sine 90? Sine 90 is 1. So you take the general example, if this theta becomes 90 degree, then A cross B is equal to we have A B sine theta, where theta is 90, sine 90 is 1. So A cross B is equal to A B we can have, correct? So this is how exactly we can find over here. Now, uh, if I have, I will give a simple uh, way to uh, get the cross product of two different unit vector. See if I have a I and J and K, the cross product of I cross J, the cross product of uh, I cross J gives K, that is I cross J gives K, comma, then the cross product of, if I go in a clockwise direction, no, anti-clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction, if I go, then J cross K, J cross K which is equal to I, so similarly, K cross I, K cross i gives a j cap so these are the basic concepts we supposed to remember over here ok so i, I cross k i cross k gives k and j cross i gives j and j cross k gives i so these are the basic concepts we have to remember now uh, if i say uh, if i go with the clockwise direction you might have surprised this if I do cross product of if I say I uh, J K if I if I go with somewhat like this I J K so if I go with the clockwise direction somewhat like this what happens if I go with the if I go with the I cross I cross K is equal to minus J. Similarly, if I go with the K cross J, if I go with the K cross J is equal to minus I and similarly if I go with the J cross I, J cross I which is equal to minus K. So similarly, these are the basic conditions we suppose to remember. So normally we suppose to use, that is the 
anti clockwise direction i cross j is equal to k and k cross i is equal to j so i i cross j is equal to k so these are the basic concepts we're supposed to remember this and the next one we supposed to be that is the cartesian coordinate so that is the important thing so what we are going to discuss just by taking a general formula of uh, cross product that is a cross b is equal to ab sin theta and similarly we have used the right hand thumb rule just remember the direction from a to b okay and uh, that's why i i told if i go with the b to a if i go with the b to a and this looks like somewhat like this right correct so the direction is opposite to this so what happens here if uh, if this is a a this is a this is a vector and this is b vector if direction goes from b to a what would be the thumb which shows the direction of a cross a cross b or b cross a if i do so what i can get over here this is a result and that gives a d over here okay so this is a direction of a point which is pointing your thumb over here this is a basic concept you can explain well dear students uh, we will discuss the same we will discuss the cross product or uh, the vector product in the cartesian coordinate how like uh, uh, we have discussed the dot product in a cartesian coordinate similarly uh, we will take two uh, vector products in terms of cross product okay so like uh, uh, if i take uh, the vector a vector which is equal to If I take one coordinate, a Cartesian coordinate like a x i cap plus a y j cap plus a z k cap, and similarly, if I take a b vector which is equal to b x i cap plus b y j cap plus b z Yeah. So this is how exactly we can expect that under the concept of a vector and b vector. Now we are supposed to cross product of this vector. In the sense, a cross b vector. Now I tell one more new method that is a determinant of a vector product over here. Okay. So this can be rewritten as this is equal to we suppose take one determinant. we will discuss this particular process in determinant method which method determinant method okay determinant method okay how we will discuss so determinant method there is a separate chapter in mathematics for a time being i discuss how much is required for our physics okay so in physics point of view we will discuss your uh, cross product of two vectors So if you have two vectors, you suppose write in such a way that first in the first row you suppose write i j k i j k in the three different coordinates and in the first vector in the, in the second row you suppose write the magnitude of a vector a which are the magnitude a x a y and a z. So this is a x a y. And insert. And in the third row, you suppose write right? magnitude of second vector. That is like b z, b y, b z. So b x, b y, and b z. Now, how to solve this with this particular scenario in determinant method? So before we move to this, we have to take this is a plus and this is minus and this is plus for whole coordinate. You suppose there is a minus and plus and plus. So this is a way to remember. Okay. Now uh, we will do this. A cross B is equal to what I can write over here. You suppose to do in such a way that take this i i over here. Then you do cross product of only this. Whenever I take. Uh, Whenever I take this i, I suppose look into only this this particular 
it is a a y cross b z we suppose to do the cross product of this with respect to i i coordinate over here so if i take i coordinate what is supposed to do the cross product of a y into b z and b y into this so what is that that is a y that is a y into b z minus minus is supposed to write that is a minus then b y into a z that is a b y into a z then what we have then you have to go with the second coordinate that is a j coordinate in a j coordinate whenever i speak a j coordinate what is supposed to do you suppose to take by leaving this coordinate which are the coordinates are left out over here only in this as well as this right so now you have to do the cross product of ax into bz so before we move to this there is one minus symbol which we have taken correct so this looks like and this looks like minus minus j into minus j into cross product of this ax into bz that is ax into bz minus bx bx into az that is bx into az correct next you take a k coordinate k coordinate is plus k coordinate got it so k coordinate if i take you have to leave this particular column so what is the remaining column i can have only this magnitude we have that is a x into by y that is x into by y minus what is our one more thing i can have over here bx into ay that is bx into ay so this is a way to get the cross product of in a easier so this this particular phenomena you have to remember at any cost so that you are going to have the proper idea about a cross b okay so different example we can have over here like uh, if, I, if i want to find the cross product of two different vectors directly you can utilize this particular formula so it is it is easier to get a uh, a uh, value whenever we are doing a cross product of two vectors i got if i have a torque torque is equal to what it is r cross f on the so this is how exactly we supposed to find a uh, torque is example for uh, cross product so remember this particular uh, formula over here, okay so this is how exactly it deals under the concept of uh, this cross product and we we'll discuss uh, and we will discuss one numerical based on this well uh, we will discuss one numerical based on this uh, cross product of two vectors so that we are going to have a clear picture about uh, what exactly it is now there is one numerical which is appeared on the board which means uh, your job is to find the magnitude of a torque of a force of f which is equal to this much and which is acting on a point where r vector which is equal to this much meter so now how to get a cross product of a force into a position vector which means we have a formula torque which is equal to that is r vector cross into f vector So this is how exactly we can find over here. Now, how to get a cross product? It is very simple, as you know. If I take a cross product of these, what I can write? Uh, if I take this, looks like R. R is how much? So when I plus three J plus K cross. F means how much? Minus three i plus j plus five k. Now you are supposed to go with the determinant method. What is the determinant method we have? Determinant method we have that is i, j, and k. In the second row, what are we supposed to write? What we have over here that is this much. Only the magnitude we are supposed to take. 
There is a seven correct only the magnitude we have taken. If I have two vector A, A and B, so only the magnitude we have taken that is nothing but the seven three one, seven three one. And what about in terms of a second vector we have? That is a minus three one into five. And about this, correct? Now we will do the cross product based on this formula which is there on the top of the board. What we have? I cap. This is I cap. This is J cap, and this is K cap. So what I can write over here? That is nothing but the torque which is equal to that is I. This is I of A Y into B Z. A Y means what? A Y means this. A Z means this. A Y into B Z. So can I write? This is nothing but three into five minus when. One into so one into one, so one into one. Can I have this? So minus why minus? Because uh, suppose we according to this uh, relation, what we have minus. So this is one. So one more into what we have is that is the J into. A x into B z, J means seven into five, seven into five minus minus of minus three into one. So this is one whole concept. Then plus k into what I can have k into seven into one, seven into one, right? So the seven into one. Which is the k then into the cross product of minus three into three, so minus three into three. This is minus of minus of minus three into three. Okay. So what is the end product I can have? This looks like a tau which is equal to. We can have if I do if I if you solve all those things first you solve this then you solve then you do the subtraction. So three into five is uh, fifteen. Fifteen minus. Uh, So one is fourteen, so we can have a fourteen i. Similarly, if I have, if I do all those things, we can have minus seventy eight j. So similarly, we can have sixteen k over here. Okay. So this is what we got a tau i. Now, how to get the magnitude of tau over here? Whenever we have magnitude, we are supposed to take a square root of that, right? The so square root with the with respect to its square. So the tau, so the tau, if I take a magnitude of this, so can I write this is nothing but fourteen square plus minus thirty eight square plus and sixteen square. So all together we can have that is uh, if I take a square root, I can have that is a forty three point forty three point five four newton. So this is the magnitude of Tau over here. So this is how exactly it looks. That is the magnitude of tau over here. Okay. So why it is a Newton meter? Because the tau which is nothing but uh, force into the position vector uh, with respect to displacement. That's why Newton meter is a unit for tau over here. So this is how exactly it is. Well, uh, we'll move on to the one more numerical which you can see on the board. See, so, you suppose calculate the area of the parallelogram of the adjacent side, which is formed like uh, a is equal to uh, 4i plus 3j, and uh, the side B which gives minus 3i plus 6j. Now, we suppose to find the area of the uh, parallelogram. So, what is the area we can find? A cross B, correct? So, a cross B. Which is equal to. Let us go with the determinant method. That is nothing but if I say I J K. What is the A value we have? What is the magnitude of A we have? It is a four and three. And is there any third coordinate? If since there is no third coordinate over here, we can take it as zero. And in the second coordinate, we can have three minus three. Six and zero over here. Okay, 
So according to our uh, determinant method, which is which you can see on the road, that is nothing but A cross B can be taken it as so A cross B is equal to. Let us go with uh, this relation. So what I can have I into. So whenever I take a first uh, row or with respect to first column, it's supposed to concentrate on this, right? So similarly, I can go with the cross product of this. So three into zero minus. 6 into 0 minus j into what I can now I suppose leave the middle coordinate then you have to cross multiplication with the first and the last coordinates right so you are supposed to do that is nothing but 4 into 0 minus minus of minus 3 into 0 plus a of let us go with the this that is a 4 into 6 minus minus of 3 into 3 so all to be that we can have that is nothing but 33 which is equal to 33 which is equal to this that is a cross b now i suppose to get the magnitude of this so what i suppose to get the magnitude of this that is nothing but a cross b which is equal to square root of the whole term is going to become 0 plus 0 plus 33 right so all together 33 whole square which is equal to 33 meter square. So this is the value of a area of a parallelogram. This is how exactly it looks. Okay. Well, dear students, uh, we will discuss a few numerical which is based on the concept we have discussed that is. Uh, cross product of the vector as well as dot product of the vectors. So whenever we have a question somewhat like this, if a magnitude of a dot b which is equal to magnitude of a cross b, what is the angle between a and b we can expect to work, right? So if we have kind of such kind of scenario, what is supposed to over here? Let us take a general formula of a, which we know that is a dot product of two vectors that is nothing but what is the dot product of two vector we can have over here? That is nothing but a dot b which is equal to a b cos theta, correct? So similarly, the cross product of a b which is equal to a b sin theta, right? So if we have such kind of numerical, let us take up the same things that is a dot b is equal to a cross b equal to so let us compare with this equation can I write the, this looks like the a b cos theta is equal to a b sin theta so if I do sin theta divided by cos theta is equal to a b by a b which is equal to 1 so sin by cos we know that is nothing but the tan theta so tan theta is equal to 1 for what angle theta becomes 1 over here so for what angle tan theta is 1 can I say tan 45 is nothing but 1 so the angle between A and B should be 45 degree so this is how exactly we are supposed to get over here and similarly, we have one more angle that is nothing but a cross b, which is equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b. If it is so, what is the angle between a and b? We should to calculate, right? So, let us go with the, the relation a cross b. Once again, a cross b which is nothing but what a b sin theta. So, similarly, we know a cross b which is equal to magnitude of a b sin theta right so if i compare it with the given equation can i write that this is nothing but a b sin theta is equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b so this will get cancelled what is remaining sin theta is equal to 1 for what angle sin is 1 whether 0 or 90 so obviously B no sin 90 which is equal to 1. If I compare it with this, theta which is equal to 90. 
90 degree so what is the angle between a and b now the angle between a and b is 90 degree so whatever they give in the examination you have to get it whether it is a cross b or whether it is a a dot b means whether it is a cross product of two vector or whether it is dot product of two vector so whenever we have a dot product of two vector which angle which function is comes into the picture when we have a dot product cos theta so when we have a cross product sin function is comes into the picture so this is what exactly we can find under the concept of the vectors okay so thank you very much